Okay, so we are at a uh, cell site here in Fredericksburg, Texas, and I just wanted to do a quick explana explanation about what's going on here and how everything works for the most part. Obviously, this is the tower. This is called a monopole because it's one solid pole holding all the equipment up, all the equipment's up there, antennas, transceivers, um, a little bit of coax up there, but not much anymore. Coax is a thing of the past. Uh, so here's our structure, structural support with big, um, basically pieces of all thread or anchors that go all the way down into a uh, box. But that's a little bit above my pay grade. Um, these right here are grounding, basically it grounds out the tower and there's a big ground ring under here called a halo. There's one for the tower and then there's one for this shelter here. Um, and it grounds out to there. This particular tower is a Sabre Industries tower and the height is 140 feet. Got the little FA code with the state ID. So overall, this is a pretty good site. Um, up here, what we're seeing is called uh, just Ice Bridge. And it is what it sounds like. It's designed to hold hold ice or anything that falls off towers or, or anything that falls from the sky and hits the cables. Keeps the ice from building up on the lines, even though we don't get too much of that up here. Inside here we have some power cable and fiber optic cables running inside of the tower. Today the coax cable are, all, are over so they no longer use coax cable on these newer sites. Um, but basically what we're seeing, these two right here are power trunks with DC cable inside. And there's one little fiber trunk right there and that actually transmits all the data um, via you know, per subscriber. There's another one right here, another fiber trunk, and then three more power trunks. So this is all DC negative 48 volt um, reverse polarity. And here's our little trapeze that hold it with some snappings up there. And then all the cables go down into these uh, DC 12 strike zorb uh, lightning arresters. Basically it just protects against a power surge or a distant lightning strike. I don't think it's actually going to protect against a full on lightning hit, but uh, I'm not the engineer for that, so I wouldn't know. Anyways, down here we have uh, just more, here's where all the cables routing into, and as you can see, all the cable routes into the bottom of these boxes, then inside are the strike warp modules, they're little cylinders, and they basically ground out whenever they um, detect the surge, protect everything inside the shelter. Um, and these are just per cell little, little boxes that go inside the actual uh, walk-in cabinet here. That's what they're called, bit wicks for walk-in cabinet. And then we have a ground bar on this side. There's also a ground bar on the other side. It looks exactly the same. Everything on these things are grounded. And then these are also grounded to their own ring. And you can see the ground leads going down here. Uh, but every piece of metal is grounded. And it's pretty secure. And then we have the fun stuff. This is our walk-in cabinet. I'm sorry. Um, like I said, it stands for WIC, so I'm gonna call it WIC from now on. Uh, on this side, we have the same thing. Like I said, the ground bar is over here. Uh, all the grounds go into it, and then you have your connections for power. Um, generator power runs underground, comes over, also goes into the WIC. And then we just have more steel supports over here. Obviously a staircase our main service disconnect for this wick here. Let's see if it's going to let me open it. Not much to it. On the outside there's your main service panel and then we have the generator disconnect and we have a monitor, an ASCO monitor here and just the indicators of if it's on load line one and line two. Now let's go inside very very loud in here so mind the noise so inside here we have our power plant system this is basically a rectification system it rectifies 240 volts AC into 48 volt DC or in this case 
It's fitting out 53.6 volts DC. These are all rectifiers here. Rectifier, 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 rectifier. And these are converters for 24 volts. The 24 volt powers all of the networking equipment, while the 48 volt powers pretty much everything else on site. Um, all of our network stuff is powered by 48 volt. We'll get to that here in a sec. So, but it's cool because it actually tells you what the current amp draw is. This isn't really under load right now because it's not hooked up to a provider. So we got 25.7 amps uh, currently drawn on the main rectifiers. And then if we go open this up, you'll see what the inside looks like. It's pretty neat. Um, basically, these are these are DC breakers. They're different from AC because DC has these little bullets on the back. They're called bullet breakers for obvious reasons. Um, and you can see how they're they almost look like a bullet. So really not much to them. Uh, this one is like a 30 amp, I believe. About 30 amp. My camera just doesn't want to focus today. Um, 30 amp breaker here. And we have all of our LTE equipment up top side. All the transceivers are on this, on these bus bars. This is our 24 volt DC bus bar. And then these are both of our negative 48 uh, reverse polarity bus bars. Down below are the batteries. These are really cool. These are rated for, I think, 120 amp hours. I do want to say 120 amp hours. I could be wrong. Uh, oh, no, 190 amp hours. Okay. I think that's what the uh, model number here indicates. It says 190. Battery string one, battery string two, all uh, wired up in series to give 48 volts here, 48 volts here, each one's 12 volt, 12 times four is 48. We do have sites where they don't have generators, so they will load this up with batteries. Um, but then you, you do, you, you, when the, you have a generator on site, you don't need that full load of batteries. It's just unnecessary. Um, there's the breakers for the battery disconnect. This is a empty FIF rack for future equipment. With the exception of the top, we have a power distribution unit. And basically we have 48 volts going in here, reverse polarity, to a power distribution unit. And we have these little, these are spare, these are um, dummies. But this is where your little fuses would be located. And you would power all your other devices off these little tabs here. Another 48 volt there bus bar back. Once again, everything in these is grounded to a spec. Um, the lacing on the cables is absolutely beautiful. It's one of my favorite parts. I'm a big cable organization control freak. So that's what that is. It's awesome. Beautiful job to uh, convertive for sure. Good bends. Um, all the cable runs up here and over and then now this is our networking side of things once again we have a power distribution unit 48 volt comes in and we have our little breakers here as you can see these are black the black just means that they're actually being used they're not dummy slots um, and then these are all of our devices being wired up to them this is an alarm cable this is our primary site router and then we have the fiber management box here. This is basically where all the fiber comes in from the tower. That was those two fiber trunks I was telling out there a little while ago. They come in here. That's it right there. That's the fiber trunk that goes outside of the tower. It comes in the back of this. Wires into the back. On the back of these LC connectors. And uh, looks something like this. And then these jump out, these come out here and they go into our uh, baseband unit or DUS, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is an extra storage tray so all the fibers can get looped and stored in here. 
and then we have our uh, baseband unit here. This uh, is not being used at the moment, but this will be for future carriers. And we have another baseband unit for 700 megahertz. And looks like first net. And then we have our 850 third carrier on here as well. And down here we have more additional carriers. This is the 1900. 1900 megahertz. And that's really all there is. Like I said, the days of coaxial cable are over. Um, this is air conditioning unit, our air conditioning controller, our um, intake fan, our intake vent, I'm sorry, this opens up. And then this is our fan that basically it's our outtake or exhaust fan. Sucks it in through the sides here and exhausts it outside. These are, these are uh, the way it works is this will cool the shelter or the cab the indoor cabinet to roughly 90 or 103 degrees and if I remember correctly once the internal temperature exceeds 103 degrees the air conditioner will kick on automatically these vents will close these fans will turn off and then it will cool to 100 103 or below and then it will repeat the process open these up and circulate new air until it needs the air conditioner again. This is just a simple little work tray here. You need to write down some things or take some logs, the laptop. This is our termination block for all the alarms. All the alarms get tied into here. And that's basically it. So, very good shelter. Um, there's a big another ground bar there, everything's grounded again. And uh, I've got LED lights up here that turn off and on by the switch here. So off, on, and uh, that's all there is to it. Small. See y'all later.